Hello Flickering Myth family and welcome to our channel. My name is EJ and we are diving into a new movie review. There is the final, final installment of the Halloween franchise upon us and we are talking about Halloween Ends. What the? What happened in this movie? This was a film like this had choices sometimes they were bold choices sometimes they were the wrong choices and then sometimes the choices worked exactly right for me i liked the movie i don't know this was quite the experience halloween ends was unlike any other halloween movie in the franchise but it still stays true to the roots we still have somebody in that michael myers mask slashing people up and that's kind of what you want from these movies but there's things that happen throughout the runtime that were again like choices that i can't believe this was the route they were taking for this entry especially for the final entry I think bold moves like what they were trying to do here would be great when they had more time to flesh some of that out. So in this review right now, I'm going to be jumping into how I feel about the movie, my overall feelings. Then we're going to get into a spoiler free discussion of the plot. And then I'm going to get into near the end of the video spoilers for the movie because I can't really talk about it without getting into it. I'm not going to jump into like the beginning, middle and end. I'm not going to tell you every damn detail of the movie, but there are some things we need to talk about that really kind of paint my feelings on the film. So if you do not want to see any spoilers for the movie, definitely tune out near the end. But for right now, we're jumping into the non-spoiler, my overall feelings on Halloween ends. And wow, there is a lot to talk about even without spoilers. Years after Michael Myers' last attack where he took out Laurie Strode's daughter and honestly half of Haddonfield, he is gone. He's reclusive. This is a weird time period for Haddonfield, for Laurie. She doesn't really know what to do. She's trying to move on with her life. She's trying to write a book. She's just trying to do anything, get along with her granddaughter Allison. But there's still that looming presence. And also the town of Haddonfield hasn't really recovered from the evil dies tonight like moment of them. They're still a bit bloodthirsty. They're still angry. And this this really shows with one of our new characters, Corey, who is uh, doing something and the, the town kind of turns against him. And from this moment, we start seeing the town is still kind of evil. What Michael Myers has done to this town still seeps in. And then Michael Myers makes his return and the bloodshed and the body count starts going up. It was definitely a lot of a Halloween movie, but there was a section in the middle where I went, well, what is this movie? What are we doing here? Uh, okay, like I said, choices. And I liked it. I thought it was flowing pretty good. The movie is very fast paced once it picks up. Like there is maybe about the hour mark. That's when the movie really gets into itself. There's a lot of setup. There's a lot of character development. There's a lot of, this is almost a character study at times. It's still about grief and trauma. We've heard Jamie Lee Curtis say the word trauma a bazillion times and we know she's seen the meme but yeah i i liked where this was setting up and then it kept going and then by the end i was just like i had fun i ended up laughing at this movie with the movie and sometimes at the movie there was definitely kills that made me go oh my god there's a moment where i legit would have stood up and clapped if i wasn't in a press screening it really had me hyped this was a really fun experience this is one of those movies that you need to see with a packed audience even if you aren't loving it there's gonna be someone behind you like screaming at the jump scares or really into the tension or clapping when laurie strode does just about anything because oh my god jamie lee curtis was over like a uh, like the rock or stone cold steve austin in 1999 wwf like she was so popular and so beloved and it's, it's just really cool of no matter what you feel about the halloween franchise the laurie strode character has really spoke to a lot of us and she's the cool final girl i'm personally like a scream friday the 13th fan so i'm not always a halloween person but jamie lee curtis as laurie strode is an iconic character and she definitely gets her moment here this is definitely way more of a, a a laurie strode movie than halloween kills was which is such a polarizing film this is going to be just as polarizing as halloween kills but i felt the choices that were made here were more interesting a little bit more thought-provoking a bit more 
at least I don't know it was different it was it was definitely a different story than what Halloween 2018 and what Halloween Kills presented so I'm happy with what they did here I'm happy they tried something this definitely feels like the epic finale of at least this chapter there is something presented here which we'll talk about in the spoiler section that could kind of insinuate we could maybe do more Halloween movies maybe not exactly with these characters and how you think of it but there's always room where evil does not die tonight and evil stays with you it, it, it seeps into your soul and how do you get rid of evil there's conversations presented here that were more mature for a slasher movie than they needed to be and then i see like michael myers step on someone's head and like oh my god there's a blowtorch kill yo the blowtorch kill even there was an opening kill that was quite a shock did not expect that to go the way it went yeah overall this movie was shocking in good ways and in bad ways i had a good time with it it's not my personal favorite halloween movie but it's definitely one that would rank higher i mean this is better than all those weird curse of the thorn movies i like this kind of more than Halloween 2. Yeah, this one's actually going to rank pretty high. For Halloween fans, at least they're making bold choices. Not as bold as Season of the Witch, which this leans a lot more to than I would have thought, but it's not as crazy as that. It's not as crazy as like Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, but it's definitely one of the weirdest, one of the most strange Halloween movies I've ever seen. Now in this spoiler section, we have to talk about what the fuck happened in this movie because whoa, Michael Myers is not the only killer. Like, Lori tries to introduce her daughter to a new boy named Corey, and Corey has tragically hurt somebody. Like I said, I don't want to get into full details, which makes the town turn against him. So we're starting to see the town really not like Corey and what that starts doing to his soul and to his spirit. And when he comes across Michael very randomly, it changes his life and it sends him on a very dark path and he starts taking after Michael. Now, did Michael possess him? Did Michael give him part of his evil dark soul? I don't know. I think there was a moment where it was way more metaphorical than the, uh, you, you kind of see a vision, you kind of share, you see the shared trauma between the two. I thought that was an interesting moment. I don't know what exactly they were trying to say. Was Michael putting his soul into him or did this kid see what Michael was and go, if this town wants me to be a monster, I'm going to be one. And here is the prime example of being a monster in Haddonfield. There's choices being made here. So we're starting to see this Corey kid get deeper into the darkness and start hurting more people. And then he's facing off with Lori and Allison. And there's an epic finale at the end. And the ending of this movie, not the very end, when they do some choices that I was like, that's a... Uh, this is like Lord of the Rings where I was like, oh my God, there's like 55 endings on this movie. Come on, just finish it. But yeah, the, the actual end confrontation, that big end battle, I loved it. There was, again, the cheering out loud moment was in this section. There was some good gore. Once the kill started picking up is when the movie really started getting to it. Once Corey's character started getting to where he was going to go, I was really back in to the film and I was really engaged and really eating everything up. Like there was uh, moments where I was just like, yo, what the hell is happening? Like, I can't believe they're actually doing this. Like, when he puts on the mask, I was waiting for the mask to maybe be the one... That That's when I was waiting for the actual, like, evil to get into him, because evil does not die tonight. It goes into other people's souls. I was waiting for stuff like that to actually happen, but that wasn't it. And there was also a radio tower, and I kept being like, is the radio transmissions making people evil? I was like, I kept hearing this movie was weird, so I kept making the movie weirder in my head. So by the end of the actual, like, weird i was just like yeah that was strange but i was even f waiting for it to go even further the uh, extra killer the michael maybe having a protege stuff that was strange and choices and definitely something we've never seen in a halloween film but i still liked it and i was honestly kind of wanting them to go weirder like make sure all the mask haunt people bring back season of the witch like five more days to halloween ha like, bring me back all that crazy shit because again i liked what was here but i thought they could have pushed the boundaries even more Halloween ends makes bold choices, bad choices, and good choices all at the same time. This one would be like a nice 6, 7 out of 10 for me. I enjoyed what was here. Not my personal favorite franchise, but at least they did something else. As a fan of the Friday 13th franchise, I like the one where Jason isn't in it. Or the one where it's the weird slug monster that goes in between bodies. I like when these long-running slasher franchises try something different. Like this year in Scream, we saw like the ghost of Billy Loomis pop up. Choices were made there. That's what I want from my slasher movie, especially long-running slasher franchises that we've seen 85 entries in. Do something different, and at least Halloween ends 
try to do that. Will everyone love it? I don't know. I enjoyed it. But what do you all think? What did you think of this review? What do you think of Halloween ends? Share your feelings down in the comments below. Subscribe to Flickering Myth because we make videos like this every single week. And give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy. All right, everyone. Let's talk about Halloween ends and the Halloween Michael Myers, Laurie Strode saga down below.